We've uh, now been joined by the ranking member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congresswoman uh, Ross Layton has been a wonderful advocate and voice for freedom and democracy in Cuba and across the world. Congresswoman, thank you for being here. Thank you, Dick. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I am so deeply honored uh, to be here tonight, and uh, I want to thank the National Endowment for Democracy and especially Carl for uh, allowing me to be part of uh, this uh, very important uh, occasion, the 2009 Democracy Award uh, Ceremony. The pursuit of freedom and human rights in Cuba is a dangerous and often, uh, to say the least, unrewarded behavior and endeavor. Those who choose to undertake this dangerous mission do so knowing that while success is unlikely, punishment is always guaranteed. And yet despite this, tonight's honorees remain undeterred in their peaceful efforts to bring democracy to the island of Cuba. And I think about their perseverance and I'm struck by the courage and reminded of something that Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor, once said, and I quote him, we who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And tonight's honorees, Jorge Luis Garcia Perez Antunes, Jose Daniel Ferrer Garcia, Librado Linares, Ivan Hernandez Carrillo, and Iris Tamara Perez Aguilera have done just that. They have chosen their own way. Stripped of their rights to enjoy even the most basic of fundamental freedoms, Antunes, Jose, Librado, Ivan, and Iris have chosen their own way of democracy. Instead of bread, they offer strength. From leading hunger strikes, to neighborhood meetings, to opening independent libraries, to human rights advocacy, these brave individuals represent the regi regime's greatest fear, the free will of the Cuban people. And while those honorees uh, currently languish in Castro cells with Iris and Antunes just arrested last night, the entire Cuban nation remain prisoners of the brutal dictatorship. The regime continues to engage in grave human rights abuses, including torture, racial discrimination, trafficking in persons, arbitrary arrests, and life-threatening prison conditions. It may be a different brother in charge, but the tyranny remains the same. We must do all that we can to ensure that the Cuban, Cuban people's call for freedom is heard. Our support must always be with those who refuse to be silenced as they suffer each day under the heavy hand of dictators. I am humbled when I see the courage of Antunes, of Jose, of Librado, of Ivan and Iris to wake up each day with the strength to face the regime that knows no compassion for its people or regrets for its transgressions. To stand up to a dictatorship without the safety net of democratic freedoms, to hope each day that international leaders might finally choose liberty over politics or commercial considerations, the Cuban people over their captors. This is the courage that tonight's honorees symbolize and the kind of courage it will take for freedom to finally take hold in Cuba. As Gandhi once said, the spirit of democracy cannot be imposed from without. It has to come from within. Antunes, Jose, Librado, Ivan, Iris represent that spirit, and I am honored to take part in this well-deserved recognition of their heroic efforts. Felicidades a todos. Gracias, Dick.